Welcome. In this video, we want to see how we can apply differentiation to find and classify stationary points and inflation points where possible the following functions. So, when you are taught to find stationary points, the first thing that you have to know is stationary points happens where uh, the derivative or the gradient function is equal to zero. So when the gradient function or when the gradient is equal to zero, that's when we have what we call stationary points or inflation points. Sometimes they, they can be called critical points. Now we have three types of uh, critical points or stationary points. One, we have a maximum, minimum, or point of inflation. The point of inflation is sometimes called the saddle point. So the first thing that you have to do, you have to find the gradient function which you have to equate to zero. So in our first question, which is a, we have a function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x uh, plus 5. So the first thing that we have to do here is to find the gradient function, which is uh, f prime of x is equal to, when we try to differentiate this one using the sum and that one we had. So we have this for the gradient function. Now, at the critical points, or stationary points, the gradient function is equal to zero. So we equate this to zero. So of zero is equal to two x minus four. From there, our of two x is equal to four. Then our of x equal to two. Now, since we are finding uh, the stationary points, we have to find the y value or the f of x at this point where we have x is equal to 2. So if I try to replace 2 in this particular function of something like this, so f of 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 4, 2, 5. Here I'll get 4, 4 minus 8 plus that, I'll get this equal to 1. So the critical point is at uh, x comma y. The x value is this one, the y value is that one. So we have 2 comma 1. So this is the critical point. Now we have to find the nature of this particular critical point, or in other words, we have to classify it. It can be a minimum, it can also be a maximum or it can be a point of inflection which we also call the saddle uh, point saddle point so the minimum looks like this one the maximum looks like that one the saddle point looks like that so this point here is what we call the saddle point it can also be the other way around now we have the minimum when the second order derivative is positive. If it is a maximum turning point like this one, the second order derivative should be uh, negative. If it is a saddle point, we get a zero. Okay, so now we have to find the second order derivative of this one for us to uh, classify this particular uh, turning point, which is this one. So I will find the second order derivative. So f double prime with respect to x is equal to 2. Now when you look at this, which sign is this one? You can, you can clearly see that it is positive. So we have what we call the minimum uh, turning point. So we can say therefore, this one is a minimum uh, turning. Okay, now, every time you are given or you are asked to find the stationary points or the critical points, the first thing that you do is uh, find the gradient function, equate it to zero, find the value for x, then replacing the actual function, find the value for y, then have the point, then test the actual point, if it is a minimum, maximum, or saddle point. Now, what will happen is for a minimum, the second order derivative will be positive. 
if it is a maximum, it will be negative. If it, is, if it is a subtle point, it will be zero. This is what we call the second order derivative test. So sometimes they will tell you to say, use the second order derivative test, then you have to use this particular concept. Sometimes you can just uh, check the neighborhood for this one and predict if it is a minimum, maximum, or subtle point. Okay, I will discuss that one in the next videos. Okay, so now we go to B. Again, we use the same procedure. We are going to find uh, dy over dx equated to zero because that's what happens at stationary points. From there, we calculate the value for x or the values for x. So you should always take note that we are not always going to have one point. Sometimes we have many points as turning points. Okay, so now let's, let's see what happens in B. So in B, we have to differentiate, we find the gradient function. We have to differentiate, find the gradient function, equate it to zero, so the value for x, of which that particular gradient function is zero. So here we have B, y is equal to x3 plus uh, 3 x. So y prime is equal to, this will be 3x uh, squared uh, plus 3. Now, at the stationary points, the derivative is 0. So if I try to equate that to 0, I can divide throughout by 3. I'm going to get 0 is equal to x squared plus 1. Here, I have x squared is equal to negative 1. So we have to find the value for x and not x squared, so I introduce square root both sides. But whenever I introduce square root, this should read positive or negative. So what we are going to have is, we are going to have this, we are going to have x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1. Now square root of negative 1, square root of negative 1 is an imaginary unit i. If I try to square, I can see uh, negative 1 is equal to i squared. Okay? There is, in the real system, there is no square root of negative uh, 1. So we imagine there is such a number, we call it an imaginary unit i. But if you square both sides, you have this. So I can use this identity to simplify whatever I have i or whatever I have. Uh, something like that. So this will be x is equal to plus or minus i. So the critical point occurs at x is equal to i or and should I say and x is equal to negative i. Now we have to find the value for y at this point and the value for y at that particular point by depressing in this particular formula. So at this point, you can say f of i is equal to i to the power 3 plus 3i. So this will be i squared multiplied by i plus 3i. This is negative, so I'm going to get negative i plus i, which will be 2i. Then I'll come to where x is equal to negative i. So after we find for this one, we go to x is equal to negative i. We are going to put negative i in the original function so that we can find the y coordinate. When we do that, we are going to have this, which will end up giving us this. Okay? Now we have to test if this is a maximum or minimum. We also test that. So we are going to use the second order derivative test. So if you try to differentiate this one twice, you get y double prime is equal to 6x. So if I try to put uh, x is equal to i, I'll get this one, which is positive. If I try to put negative i, I'll get this one. Now, when I get a positive, it will be a minimum turning point. When I get a negative, it will be a maximum turning point. But if I get a zero, it will be a subtle point. So this is uh, not the only way in which you can test. 
you can also test the neighborhood for this one and that one then you can determine whether it is maximum or minimum i'm going to do a video on how to do that so for this and more videos uh, subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you very much for watching